Hi, I'm Aaron from Revit Auto, and today we're going to be installing the Maximum Motorsports caster camera plates on our 2012 Ford Mustang. Alright, so our first step is we're going to jack up the vehicle. So you want to make sure your floor jack is underneath and on the pinch well on the chassis. All right, so now that we got our car all jacked up in the air with plenty of space, we're gonna go ahead and put our safety stand right underneath the car. So that way we can pull our floor jack out. We don't have to worry about the car falling on us. So you just wanna make sure you get it centered up on the pinch well, raise it up, and then we can go ahead and slowly lower our jack. And there we go. So now we can go ahead and start removing parts. All right, so now the first step, we're gonna go ahead and remove our wheel. Our Ford Mustang has a 21 millimeter. So we got our 21 millimeter 3 8 on our 3 8 air impact. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and start removing stuff. We're gonna remove our nut off our sway bar end link off the strut. And that is an 18 millimeter. And since this is a little rusty, we're gonna throw some penetrant lubricant on there. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove our nut on the top of our strut, which is a 21 millimeter right here in the middle. Since we don't have a spring compressor, we're gonna stick a floor jack underneath the control arm and we're gonna slowly lower it down. So that way we won't fling the spring out. So we're gonna go ahead and spray our end link. Get that all nice and lubricated so we don't spin the stud. And then we got our air gun with our 18 millimeter. So it looks like we got a little stuck, so we're gonna get a pry bar and put some tension to it and see if we can get it to come all the way out. All right, so we got our nut off our end link. So I'm gonna show you guys how to safely remove the end link because right now it's under a little bit of tension. So I got a pry bar right here. This is your sway bar right here. So I have my pry bar sitting on top of the sway bar and then this is your cross member up here and I just have it anchored on the cross member. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of pressure and then I can remove the end link. So now we can go ahead and remove our nut on the top of the strut. All right, so before we undo the strut, we're gonna remove this 10 millimeter bolt back here that holds our brake line to the strut. And then there is a plastic clip over here that holds your ABS sensor. So we just need to go ahead and remove this guy. So now our brake line's free. Now we can remove our plastic clip. Now we can go ahead and remove the nut on the top of the strut. So we got our gun up here with our 21 millimeter on the top nut on the strut. But before we loosen that, we gotta stick our floor jack right underneath the lower ball joint on the lower control arm. So that way we can keep tension on it. And when we loosen that nut, it doesn't just drop a whole strut and assembly out. So you can see the rotor's moving up. So we got pressure on there. So now we can go ahead and loosen this. There we go. We got our nut off. It's stuck in our socket. We're just gonna do that. And set that off to the side. Fits perfectly in that little hole there. Next step, before we lower our jack any further, we're gonna remove these 13 millimeter bolts that hold the top hat of the strut. So now we got those nice and loose. We're gonna go ahead and lower our jack down. So now we have no more pressure on the spring. Now we can go ahead and you can see here, we have no tension. So we're gonna go ahead and remove our 18 millimeter bolts here and down here that hold the strut to the knuckle. Don't put your hands right here because these have little stoppers that are attached to the nut and they go by themselves. All right, so one thing to remind you guys with is that you want to be very careful pulling this apart because inside this black plastic piece right here, there's a whole bunch of tiny ball bearings. And if you break any of it, these ball bearings are just going to come out and they're going to go flying everywhere. You're never going to find any of them and then you're gonna be SOL. So now we go ahead and take our Maximum Motorsports caster camera plate. So yours should look just like this with this little notch right here. It's gonna be facing outwards with the mounting on the bottom of the strut. 
and then this larger stud is going to be facing the rear of the vehicle. I'm just gonna set this down on the stud, line it up, and then it should just click right on. Just like that. And now for us, since I have a helping hand, I'm gonna have him push this down, and then I'm gonna take the nut, and I'm gonna thread it onto the stud. All right, so we got our caster camera plate mounted on the top of our strut. We have it on by a couple threads. It's really difficult to have someone push it down and then another person trying to thread the nut on a little bit, so you really have to work it. And you really have to make sure that this stud comes in through the hole perfectly straight, otherwise it gets crooked and then the threads get jammed up. It's a whole fun ordeal. But we have everything ready. We got our big stud facing towards the back of the vehicle. And then we got our little notch lined up here. So now we can go ahead and fit it up inside the car. All right, so we can go ahead and get our push our hub up. I'm just gonna line up just like that. And then for the bottom one, I'm just gonna wiggle the hub back and forth. Now we're all the way through. I'm gonna take these, make sure these are faced face towards the front. Just get the threads started and then the gun will take care of the rest. And then this one for the very bottom just goes flat on the bottom. Just go ahead and tighten in a couple threads. And then we can go ahead and take our impact gun and, and zip those on. Sensor wire back into our struts right down here. And then we can get our 10 millimeter bolt for our brake line. And we can go ahead and place that back into position. All right, so to get the end link back in, we're just gonna do that same thing and we're gonna pry down on our, on our sway bar. Now we can just take our nut, stick it on a couple threads so it's still kind of loose. Make sure our gun's all the way on max. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and tighten our 21 millimeter nut. So we're gonna go ahead and hand tighten all these 13 millimeters. And we're not gonna get them fully tight. We just wanna get them nice and snug. And we just wanna make sure our plate will be lined up correctly up here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set the caster first as per the instruction. So we're gonna try to get this all the way forwards feels like that is all the way forwards. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten just this big 17 millimeter nut. As long as the 13s are still loose. And tightening this nut will set the caster. All right, so now we can go ahead and set our camber. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the spring and I'm just gonna push inwards towards the engine until it doesn't move. Now I can go ahead and snug up my 13 millimeters. All right, and we're all set. Now we can just go ahead and throw our wheels on and set our car down. And one of the things that we're gonna check when we set the car back down on the ground is our toe. And the toe is how far the wheels are turned in or out. So we're gonna make sure that it's safe enough for us to drive to the alignment shop so that way we can get it correct. 